I would like to take a few minutes of your time to highlight the personality flaw of arrogance. Let's look to the scriptures for this topic. In particular, 2 Chronicles 26 verses 1 to 23, where the chronicler writes of King Uzziah of Judah. First, let's briefly examine who was King Uzziah. Secondly, what were his achievements and why or how was he successful? Thirdly, did King Uzziah finish the way he started? We will close our overview with three takeaways that we may find useful. King Uzziah was selected by the Judean people to be king at the age of 16. King Uzziah's rule spanned 52 years, but I'll give you a little homework because he actually ruled solo for only 17 of the 52 years. Nevertheless, King Uzziah was considered one of the top five kings of Judah, and that list includes David and Solomon, which is really quite impressive. Uzziah means the Lord my strength. Just by saying his name, he was giving God the glory. Can you imagine everywhere Uzziah went and whenever he was introduced, there it was, the Lord my strength. This is a tragic story of how 52 years of Judean leadership, fame, great notoriety can be wiped away in less than 52 minutes. The length of King Uzziah's reign was only second in length to Judea's King Manasseh's reign. You can do the homework, but Uzziah was the third Judean king in a row whose life begins wonderfully, looks promising, but ends poorly. Many of us start out well, but precious few end well. King Uzziah is referenced in 2 Chronicles 26 verses 1 to 23 and 2 Kings chapter 15 verses 1 to 7. You will find 23 verses in 2 Chronicles, but only 8 verses in 2 Kings. 2 Kings barely mentions any of King Uzziah's accomplishments and doesn't mention Uzziah's failures, but it does chronicle his last days afflicted with leprosy until the day he died. King Uzziah was a strong man, a visionary leader. He's an overachiever as a young man. Uzziah was so well thought of, the people of Judah made him king. In verse 2, Isaiah restored a seaport town that was the major port of trade to the east, used by his predecessor, King Solomon. In verses 6 through 8, he becomes an international star and military genius by taking on and defeating long-term enemies of Judah, the Midianites, the Philistines, and the Arabs. Tributes were paid to King Uzziah. He was very strong and his fame spread as far as the borders of Egypt. Very similar to things said of King Solomon. God helped Uzziah fight his battles against his enemies. Verses 9 through 10 chronicles King Uzziah's domestic achievements, such as building towers and gates in Jerusalem and all around Judah. He loved the soil employing farmers and vine dressers. Verses 11 to 15, Uzziah built an enviable modern army that struck fear in all of Judah's enemies. He had a well-trained army of 307,500 men led by 2,600 men of valor. Each soldier was equipped with the best armor and weapons. So here are the factors that made Uzziah great. First, in verse 4, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He concerned himself with God's approval. In other words, Uzziah made it his ambition to please God. Secondly, in verse 5, he searched for God. He sought for the Lord in all of his plans. Uzziah received daily instructions in the fear of God from his spiritual mentor, Zechariah. They met every morning or regularly at Caribou Coffee or Starbucks. I'm just checking to see if you're paying attention. Thirdly, also in verse 5, the scripture highlights as long as he sought the Lord, he kept the Lord in his proper place on the throne. There are two key points of note. In the years that Isaiah flourished, he set himself to seek God. Isaiah is one of the whiz kids that can answer the first catechism question. What is man's chief end? What is the answer? 
Man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Not much is written about Zechariah, but in addition to teaching Uzziah to fear the Lord, we can assume that he also held Uzziah accountable for his life with God. We all need and can use godly mentors and friends to encourage our spiritual growth and to keep us accountable to that purpose. After all, Hebrews chapter 3 says to encourage one another. By verse 15, Uzziah's fame had spread far and wide. He had become very powerful. There was a big change here. Something changed in Uzziah's life. Perhaps too many groupies tell him how great he was. It seems likely that Zechariah was no longer an influence in his life. Perhaps he died or was replaced with a different mentor. Sometimes we start believing we've outgrown many of the things we grew up hearing. When Uzziah became strong, he grew arrogant and proud. At some point, he forgot it was the Lord's handiwork alone. He became arrogant and forgot the Lord. So now we read of his downfall in verses 16 to 21. Uzziah sinned against the Lord by taking to himself a prerogative that was not his to take. Yes, Uzziah was the king. Yes, he was involved in the expansion of domestic and international commerce and tremendous military might. And yes, he was a national hero. But he was not called to be a priest. God had expressed provisions for the selection of priests, so by taking on the priestly role, a role that was not provided to him by God, Uzziah was essentially saying to God, not your way, but my way. Uzziah had read so many of his own press clippings, he had so many Twitter followers, that he decided to dethrone God. In verse 17, God provided an escape for Uzziah. Uzziah, the priest, along with 80 other priests, were brave enough to try to stop the king. The Lord was providing Uzziah a way for escape from the temptation. While in the Lord's temple, Uzziah began to rage against the priest. You can only imagine what was said. Perhaps he said, I appointed all 81 of you guys. I built all of this as far as the eye can see. There wouldn't even be 81 of you if I hadn't grown this kingdom. Judah's enemies tremble in fear at the mere mention of my name. I'm a bad man. Then he probably pulled his training day quote on them. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. God, in his mercy, had brought people to Uzziah at the proverbial fork in the road, a point of a significant moral choice that would ruin his life forever. This was a turning point for Uzziah to realize that God was in control. <clears throat> and metaphorically fall to his knees and thank God for stopping him in his stupidity and from canceling out all that he had been uniquely blessed to have. After all, God is committed to his children doing the right thing. God is merciful. God sends people our way, a spouse, a friend, a parent, ministry members, a sibling, our children, etc., and some of us can identify with this and say, been there, done that. Some of us may be struggling with a significant moral decision at this very moment. And if we make the wrong choice, our ministry, our usefulness, our lives, our family, our marriage, our reputation, our heritage, our business, our jobs could be wiped out forever. As I stated earlier, 52 years and 52 minutes, just like that. This was not a teenager, but a king in his late 50s or early 60s we are talking about here. Uzziah's success had blinded him to God's generosity. As the king, Uzziah did not refuse himself anything. Obviously, Uzziah had long stopped his morning meetings with Zechariah. I take it that his mentor has passed away by this time by the phrasing in verse 5a. Isaiah sought God during the day of Zechariah. I found this comment in one of my Bible commentaries. Arrogance or pride stinks. The problem is the person, the proud person is the only one who can't smell it. 
In a weird way, the guardrails or training wheels were off. Perhaps Zachariah served that purpose. Uzziah otherwise would have been embarrassed to behave this way in front of his father figure, his mentor. He had no one he respected enough to call him to task. Is that what happens to some of us when we lose a significant other in our lives, a spouse, a family patriarch, a family matriarch? My uncle uses this phrase, came too far, stayed too long. The intervention of the 81 priests was too little, too late. Uzziah had to be surrounded by royal advisors, but it's obvious he was too full of himself, too puffed up to accept advice. After all, he was the great Uzziah. Let's bring this discussion home. Uh, Verses 19 to 22, Uzziah, while still holding the incense burner in front of the incense altar, while raging and using all kind of language, while still in the temple, Leprosy suddenly broke out on his forehead. The Lord had struck him. From that day until the day he died, Uzziah lived in isolation in a cottage out back. Excluded from the temple of the Lord, not even fit to lead Judah, his son Jotham took charge of the palace and governed the people. The prophet Isaiah records that Uzziah was not buried in the tomb of the kings. It's a final dishonor, but he was buried in a nearby burial field belonging to the kings. One commentary says even in death, Uzziah did not lose the shame of leprosy. Here are some remedies, three of them, that would have served Uzziah well that we should take note of. 1. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Pray for your spiritual and political leaders. For your pastors Ministers, elders, deacons, and political leaders are no better off than Isaiah without the Lord. Point number two, Mark chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Use the word of God in prayer to combat what's in our hearts. Make yourself accountable to another mature believer as Isaiah did with Zechariah in his early days. Point number three, Psalm 51. In Christ, there always remains the opportunity to finish well. You never outgrow what the gospel offers sinners, the benefits of repentance and forgiveness. King David repented. David is not remembered as an adulterer or murderer, but he's remembered as a man after God's own heart. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this important lesson and warning from the life of King Uzziah. I pray that we all examine the x-ray of our hearts and recognize even the slightest tendencies toward arrogance. Strengthen us, Heavenly Father, that when you send us those intervening forces that care for us, that you will help us not to rage against them, but to be humble enough to know that you sent them, that we may be brought back in line with your word and your plan. I pray that this day, Lord Jesus, King of the universe, that you may be enthroned as King of our hearts. Forgive all attempts to take your place. In Jesus' name we pray, and they all said, Amen.